Yo, hold up, pause. Hey guys, my name is Jamie Stevenson. Probably the first time most of y'all are seeing me, I'll let you know me for my music. But besides being a musician, I'm also a haunted house actor in the local center here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you couldn't tell by my dress. Yes, I was a haunted house actor from September 24th to November 6th as of last year. And I want to connect with some people because I worked at a local haunted house here uh, that's based on a true story, aka the Beast House, or better known as Beast House, the money back haunted house. It's not, oh, it's not really money back if you just walk through. You actually got to do a challenge. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be over some of my stories, what it was like working at the Beast House, and basically just the history of the Beast House. So yeah, that's what we're going to be going over. I'm going to put a picture of the Beast House up on screen in a minute. But so my name is Jeremy. As we started off, uh, this is my hoodie from Beast House. I'm going to change it in a minute because it's kind of hot outside. But I'm just going to be going over everything, like the type of people you're going to encounter, uh, questions people ask me, and all kind of stuff that I just find really interesting that I think people want to know. And I'm just going to go over some of my stories. And I hope I can turn this to a full-fledged series leading up to uh, the September when the haunted house opens back up and I'll be going back. I'll be working there again. So maybe if you live in the Nashville area or the Madison area, you want to come work at Beast House here in Nashville, Tennessee. Feel free, I'll be coming back, and honestly, I might get to see some of the people that started watching this, because I hope to influence all my horror fans that love haunted houses just like I do. So, I'm a, I'm a, before, we, I'm a, before we get into the next part of the video, sorry about the stuttering, I'm going to put a picture of the Beast House up on the screen for y'all, where you can see what it looks like, and then I'm going to get into part one of the four parts of today's video, and hopefully, maybe y'all can comment some questions in the comments. So, let's get into it. Okay, let's get straight up into this video now. So, one of the first most quick feeling things I found out from, like, people on the internet, since I don't really have questions from fans yet, but I hope y'all can give me some questions. One of the most frequently things, people are like, what is your schedule usually when you work at a haunted house? Uh, well, this usually depends. On my schedule, usually I had to be signing around 5 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon, and I usually got off around 12, 1 o'clock-ish. Uh, it varies between different haunted houses. I know the other haunted house here in Nashville called the Nashville Nightmare. Some of the employees don't get off to, like, 1, 3 in the morning, so... Yeah, uh, I got off around 1 to 2. That's just, like, the first frequent thing that comes up. Like, what's it like with hours? Honestly, I slept perfectly. I worked. I went to school and worked another job. And, honestly, I would literally stay up all night and then go right back to work. So, if you're thinking your schedule is going to affect you working in a haunted house, honestly, you really shouldn't be worried about that. Uh, if you're working in a haunted house, the only thing that's really going to get you is the fact you're probably going to get tired really fast because you're going to be on your feet all night. A haunted house is a more physically demanding job than most. You're going to be staying in for at least five hours. You're going to be yelling and screaming and sometimes touching or grabbing people. Depends. Some haunted houses won't allow you to grab. Where I work, we, were, we weren't allowed to, but we were allowed to tap you with pool noodles. I don't sadly have mine anymore. I think it got ripped at the end of the season, actually. Uh, but I was like a cannibalistic priest. Uh, I'll try to find a photo of my costume and put it up on screen for you guys as well. But, but yeah, hold on, let me try to see if I can find a photo. I'm going to put it up on screen for you real quick. Hey, now that you see my costume, sorry, I look a lot different. I changed in the span of a year, but the, the most frequent thing is like, okay, wh what about looks? Okay, so where I worked, I worked in a haunted house that was like multiple. There was two haunted houses on the property. There was one known as the Beast House, which is the main attraction that you go through first. It's like a 20-minute long attraction. Then you have the Chaos. I was a part of the Chaos. I didn't get to work in the actual haunt. I got to work in the Chaos, which was a fogged-up room. It was quite fun, but it was kind of hard to see, and... um quite fun really fun actually and i really did enjoy myself while working in the chaos and honestly it's one of those things that when you work in a harness it's like you build a family reputation because like so many you find so many people you like and you basically make a connection with a lot of people and so yeah we're gonna move on to the next section uh next section this is one of my favorite things that be asked uh because another one of the questions i found on google a lot of people ask what are some of the types of people you can run into at a haunted house while working this is a really good question Oh, dear Lord. So, one of my favorite kind of people to run into were the flashlight users. I'm going to warn you, use a flashlight in the haunted house. You basically done gave yourself away and made yourself a walking target. I, w I can ask any of my past coworkers and I'll tell you, you turn a flashlight on, you are now my walking target, and I will now stalk you for the rest of the haunted house. Reason why, you are basically giving yourself away. Don't let me know you're here unless I want to know you're here. Okay, now the next thing, I don't even have to actually leave my area. I'm going to be right back. Actually, I don't have to get up, probably. I don't want to drag my phone off the shelf, but let me see if I can find it. I think I still have it. Okay, so, I don't know if all haunted houses had these. I'm sorry if that looked... Well, I was trying to grab this. Uh, they light up. I don't think it still will because this is like a year old. Oh, it does. Um, 
Actually, a customer threw this at me while I was working at the haunted house. Like, I kind of took it because he threw it at me and I didn't give it back. So if my boss is seeing this, sorry, he threw it at me. I never give it back because he assaulted me with it. We had these and since I was in the fog, if you brought one of these in with you, which a lot of people did, they were $4. These are four books. And they would bring these into the haunted house. They would be green and red. And you basically gave yourself away. So if you were one of those people in the haunted house, I'm sorry. It's the same. Flashlight or those, you literally make yourself a walking target. <laughs> Y'all are my two favorite type of people. Next up, you have the one who acts tough, but you know he's really not. Now, I know there's a lot of people like, oh, I'm actually tough. I'm not scared in haunted houses. Yes, you're not allowed not to be scared, but don't be that one person that walks in, threatens the fight, or literally gives me that look like they're going to be a young boy and bucks up. But then the second they turn the corner, they get scared. It's okay to get scared. You're paying to get scared. Don't get mad when you get scared. It's okay. That's literally just all I can say. They're the type that act hard, but then don't they get scared and then they want to claim they never did. Okay, the one girl who's always recording. Oh dear Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, I have ran into so many of these girls that are always recording everything in the haunted house. Like they can literally be looking at a wall with no animatronic or nobody in the corner and claim there's somebody there and still be recording. I'm sorry, that's kind of just why. Why record a wall that's nobody at? And my next type that you can run into while working in the haunted house is a person that gets overly scared at something that's not really scary. Uh, I, I, I ran into a person who literally peed themselves. I jumped around the corner and started him, and he literally peed himself and walked out the haunted house. Honestly, I I didn't even mean to scare him that bad. And I also had a customer that I literally just, I was kind of busy doing something. So when I heard him walk in, I just screamed at the top of my lungs, and he said nope, and walked just right back out the haunted house. I didn't even get to see what was so scary about what I said. He literally just walked right back out the door, because I was at the beginning of the haunted house. He literally just walked right back out the door and said he wasn't going through. That was his 15 bucks he wasted, but honestly, it's not my fault. Uh, the person that literally wants to fight. Okay, I have had some people either try to fight or have actually hit me. I'm not trying to scare anyone from not working out the haunted house. There's a chance you might get hit. I was hit twice in the period of two and a half months, but honestly, they didn't hurt as bad as I thought they would. As honest, I just learned to start taking them because I was so used to someone either slapping me or catching me by surprise. Half the time, it wasn't their fault. Sometimes it was my fault because I probably, once they told me they're going to hit me, I should have pr probably learned to back up. But yeah, you're going to run those people while you're working in the haunted house. It's not always common to, but you might. Next person is, I like to call them the track star. As everyone, if you've seen TikTok. These people are very common. They're the people that pay but run like they're Usain Bolt right back out the building. You're the one who just paid $15 and we're in and out of this attraction in less than 10 minutes when it's supposed to take you about 30. I'm sorry. It is just funny to see you run. Honestly, if I was allowed to record you, I'll record you running out that front door. Okay. The next type of person, I call these guys the one that always fall. I had at least, I remember one night I had a group of 10 people fall in front of me and then all started laughing when they were all trying to get back up and I kept scaring them. They kept falling right back down. So it was like dominoes. They would get up and they would fall right back down. It was literally a laughing joke till they finally got away from me. Okay. The one who's always anticipating the one that's always like pointing out like there's going to be someone in that corner there, buddy, there is no one in that corner. If you physically say I'm somewhere, I'm going to move my location where I'm not there. I've had so many people point into a corner where I would be standing and then I would move. So when they walked around that corner and tried to scare me, I would not be there. Don't call out my location because I'm going to move and find a new spot to scare you from. Okay, the person that stands still and becomes a statue. You're another annoyance. No offense. I get it. Sometimes fear takes the better of us and we don't know what to do. But I've literally had people stand there and look at me and just not know what to do and then finally just walk off. I, no better way to put you. And the last one I'm going to touch on today's video, I'll probably touch on more later, but the last one I'm going to touch on today's part are the people that literally, that literally just don't think, but they're scared to go in. Like they come and they know they're going to get scared and then they decide to wait in the car. Why did you even agree to tag along? If you know you're not going to want to go into a haunted house. Why did you tag along? I'm sorry. It's funny when your friend's like, oh, my other friend would be here, but she, she got scared and didn't come. It's a haunted house. You're going to get scared. In most haunted houses, there's usually actors in the parking lot. So you're not getting away either way. If you sit in the parking lot, you might have an actor run up on your window. I've never had any, anyone do it at my old job at the Beast House. I've never had anyone run up on the window. But I know at National Nightmare, I've seen a couple people's car. People run up on their cars with chainsaws and stuff. But 
It's the haunted house you're getting scared. Okay, next part of this video. Ooh, this is one of my favorite parts. What is it like behind the scenes of a haunted house? Now, I can't spoil a lot because I'm going back, so I don't want to make my boss mad if he sees this video and be like, oh, you're spoiling a lot. What it's really like is you're going to make a lot more friends than you think. Honestly, you build like a family while you're working there. And I built a lot of new friends and reputations. Like, honestly, how my schedule started, I would be there around 5 o'clock. I would usually do my own makeup, as you see in the previous pictures. I usually did it or I had let the makeup artist do it. And then around 30 minutes before the haunt opened, I would go into my spot with my coworkers because I had, I think there was three of us in a room together. And we would basically, for the last 30 minutes before we opened, we would all be on TikTok, chatted up, and basically hype ourselves up right before the haunt opened. And honestly, usually, it would be busy a lot. And the next thing I want to talk on, a lot of people say, what days are busy? That's another question I find on Google that a lot of people want to know. Which is their busier? Weekends or weekdays? Well, personally, I never worked weekdays. I only work weekends. I think I worked one weekday. It was a Thursday. Um, and my haunted house was only open on Friday, Saturday, and three Sundays and one Thursday. My Thursday I worked, nobody showed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I got a total of 50 customers that night. My Fridays, I, I think I got between 7 to 1,000. And Saturday, I think I get, we get any, you can get anywhere up to 2,000 people. This really depends how popular Honey House is. Uh, my Honey House is, I think, it was pretty popular to, from my opinion. Every year I went, there's, there were some times where I literally waited an hour in line just again because I used to be a customer before. My cousin was like, hey, my one of my friends used to work there. You should go get a job there. And I was like, you know what? You know, they're hiring. I'm going to go get a job. And honestly, I met the dopest boss in the world. And honestly, when I got, I want to do a video with him. And have him answer some questions about what it's like owning a haunted house. He was the dopest person in the world. Security was dope. And honestly, really dope. Now, this is some of the. This is going out to some people that when I was working in the haunted house, I got I got questioned by a lot of people that seen like my Snapchats. They would send me questions. I'm going to answer some of those because I know a lot of them been waiting me for to make this YouTube series, and I've just been delaying it since late December. So one of the most uh, questions I got was, "Is it hot in there?" Very, very hot. It can be the coldest day in October, and you still be hot. And I'm, that's just me being for real. It, you will still be hot. Next question. Does the makeup seem to come off? God, yes. I'm sorry. That makeup, you can try your hardest. It's not staying on all night. It will come off eventually. It's, it, it'll stay there, but it's going to start leaking. Um, What's it like before, like when you're getting off? Is it terrible after work? I, I, I read that terribly. Um. Getting off work is usually not terrible. Usually by the time I got home, I was already just ready for sleep, and I would go straight to sleep. Uh, next question. What was my favorite memory? Favorite memory was the night uh, I went on the rooftop. We had a thing called the beast jump. I still have the bracelet. I'm not reaching for it because it's, it's in my drawer. Uh, but I got chicken out from doing it, and I got caught a chicken for the rest of the year. I'm scared of heights. So y'all can go ahead if you want to. Make fun of me in the comments. I'm scared of heights. I didn't jump off the roof. It's like a 30-foot jump. I got scared to do it, and I never did it. Okay, I never did so that was my most embarrassing but funniest moment. Next funniest moment, I literally, one night, I literally fell and twisted my ankle before work. And my boss sitting on camera. And he had asked me, he didn't even decide to ask me at work. He waits till the haunt house closed. He's like, did you get hurt when you fell? And I was like, yeah, I twisted my ankle, but I kept going. Or the final one that I'm going to mention was the night I broke the chicken wire fence. So the area I was in, I was surrounded by chicken wire. And I had tried to jump on top of it, and it couldn't hold my weight, and the wire gave out. So I had to text my boss and the security guard, who was also, like, management, to come fix the gate. Because the gate had broke, and customers were trying to get in. And then, yeah, it wasn't good because a little girl tried to get in. I screamed so loud when she was trying to come in. She started crying, and her mom wasn't very happy with me. So, yeah. Okay, last topic I'm going to cross today before I let you guys go. And then I'll hope you guys ask some more questions in the comment that I can answer. Because I want to make this a whole series where I can just go over answering your haunted house questions. Because I've always been on YouTube trying to find people like answering questions about haunted houses. Nobody answers them. Last part. Um, what is my favorite thing about haunted houses? I'm just going to go over like a two minute summary. Well, it's not really what, it's why I started. So the reason I started working at haunted houses is ever since I was like young, I was really into horror stuff, movies in general. And... Honestly, my cousin took me to my first haunted house when I was like 14 years old. I really enjoyed it. And then 15 and 16, I went with a couple of friends. And then on my around 16, my best friend who had never been to a haunted house decided to walk up to me in high school and ask me, hey, 
can you take me to a haunted house? And I did not disagree. His mom kept begging him not to go because he wasn't going to like it. But honestly, I was 16 and dumb, even though saying that, that like it's so long. I'm only 18. I just now graduated high school. But his mom kept telling him not to go with me because I was I've already been to him like four years in a row. And I was used to him at this point. But he still wanted to go. I took him to his first haunted house that in October of my sophomore year. Uh, to the, actually the haunted house I worked at, aka Beast House. I took him to Beast House, and we both bought tickets. Uh, I'm going to show some pictures. Uh, we took pictures in front of a hearse and at the throne of Bones in the front. Best night of my life. I had an amazing time because I was chasing him around the haunted house because he was horrified. And he, he, was, he just zoomed like Usain Bolt. And it was basically me chasing my six foot one friend around the haunted house. So there was two six foot one dudes running around the haunted house, looking like they were terrified. And we had ran so fast we had caught up to the other group that was supposed to be like ten minutes ahead of us. And then we all walked in like a straight line together. Honestly, it was really fun. And then what led me to getting the job is I was I was planning on going to the haunted house that last October. Well, technically September because it opens in September. But I was going to work at Nashville Nightmare. I submitted my application to Nashville Nightmare. I was only 17. And Nashville Nightmare actually rejected me. Because you had to be 18 to work at Nashville Nightmare. So I was checking on my dog. He, he was whimpering. But you had to be 18 to work at Nashville Nightmare. And they basically rejected my application. And then my cousin's like, you know, my friend used to work there at Beast House. And he's mostly going to hire you. So I went, put in my application, and went through all the meetings and stuff and basically got the job. And literally had the best three months of my life. I made a lot of money, and I literally just enjoyed myself. But now I'm going to put up a couple photos from just me and my friends from the haunted house, and I hope you guys enjoy. Um, like, comment, subscribe, leave a couple comments of questions you want me to answer, and ideas about what you want me to talk about next, about uh, Jeremy, Life of the Haunt. So I'll see you guys next time, hopefully.